Hey everybody, Lee from Peace Junkie Mods. So today is an exciting day. We're gonna talk about um, a new project that may be drawn out over a long period of time because it's not gonna be paying the bills. Um, but I'm gonna be doing two of these. So one is for a customer up in uh, Portland. That'll be a totally different build log or video log, whatever you wanna call it. And then this one will be mine. So um, basically what we have in front of me is the Red Harbinger desk. Um, so I went ahead and unpacked everything. This is one of the prototypes. This isn't the actual retail version, um, but needless to say, I'm still super excited to work with it. And um, yeah, so I just, I can't wait to get rolling on it. Uh, I got some stuff done last night. I took the whole, the whole uh, desk apart. I took every piece off of it that would come off of it and cleaned everything up. So that way, um, cause it looked like it had been sitting around a little while. So I went in and cleaned it all out and just to get the feel for the desk, uh, I went in and pulled every single screw I could possibly pull out of it and disassembled it. Also one of the unfortunate things was uh, it looked like a forklift had, had uh, run into the box. There was a fork puncture. That puncture actually did hit the center bar. So as you can see it's straight now, but it was pretty blown out back here in the back area. Um, it was kind of back here and it had twisted up this whole area here where the IO was at and stuff So I went ahead and banged that out last night. So that's nice and straighter than it was last night um, So that's that's a good thing because I, I didn't really want to try to remake that piece, you know uh, It's longer than my metal brake. So I, I, I don't know where I would have got this bend this top bend from uh, I would have had to bend that and the bottom pieces so uh, don't know how that would have worked out. All right, so let's get into what I got going on and what I'm going to be doing. Um, so basically, the desk, this desk came with one I/O panel cut out, set up for one motherboard. Um, I'm assuming that, uh, pretty sure uh, from Peter Brands, I've looked at his in, in you know multiple pictures and stuff. He has all the hard drives laid out here, so I'm pretty sure that this board, this setup, will have the hard drive set up over here. Um, so I'll have two racks of hard drives and then I'll have the water cooling and stuff. I'm still trying to figure that out. I'm not sure if I'm going to use the 360 rad here. I may just do two 480, 480 rads in the back. Um, but we'll get into that later. That'll be about a different part of the video. And then you have in the center here this big open platform and a lot of times you'll see um, the two desks that I've seen P Peter do. He's had different kind of reservoir and pump arrays basically when i say that um, there's a desk where there's four reservoirs here there's another one where they're sideways um, and then his current one the razor um, that one has just got all kinds of stuff going on i'm not sure how i'm going to set this up yet i've been trying to brainstorm it because what i'm thinking is this will be water cooled the other side is either just going to be a 240 cpu water cool or it'll be an aio i'm not sure yet so let's move over to that side here and have a look so I did some modif- I had to put the desk back together partially. I put this piece in, this piece in, and I laid this tray in here. Um, they did send me a bunch of extra trays, so that was cool. I found that this one lines up with all the holes pretty good, so that's pretty awesome. Um, what I went ahead and did is I already laid out where I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna do this. Um, so basically I'm gonna be cutting off this part of the IO, so everything to the left here will be gone. I'm gonna cut out all that metal back here behind because this is actually where I'm gonna, I'm gonna house my ITX setup. So this ITX setup will be, I'm basically taking everything from my personal build and putting it in here. So it'll have the, uh, the RAID array for the storage. This will basically be my home server and the other side will be my gaming machine. So that's the plan. Um, basically I won't have any monitor hooked up to this. I'll do all like team viewer or whatever, remote login and uh, through the network transfer because it'll all be on my network. And then what else I'm gonna have set up here is I will have four or five and a quarter drive bays taken up. One will be my Blu-ray and the other three will be all Aqua computer components. So basically I'm gonna have uh, six PowerAdjust 2s and I will have my um, Aquero fan controller. And then here I'm gonna try to finagle this area into being the hard drives for the storage setup. So I'm shooting for eight hard drives right here. 
Um, I should be able to finagle that with a four chassis and another four chassis or maybe have them this way. Um, so I'll figure that out as I go, I guess, because everything, everything from here to the board, this will be all open here. So um, I have plenty of room to figure out where I'm gonna put stuff. Um, so that's it, I guess, for over here for now. And then as you can see in the back, I don't know how many people have really got to look at a video of this chassis. Um, there's plenty of space back here. So for the most part, I gotta figure out back here where I'm gonna put the power supplies because if I stick with the power supply I originally had for the ITX, it has really, really short cables because um, it is the um, Silverstone 450S, uh, I forget what it's called. It's the 450 power supply fully modular. But the cables are literally like that long. So either I'm gonna redo all the wires or I'm gonna put the power supply really close to the board and stuff. So that way I don't gotta run the, 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 the cables very far. Um, and then for this system over here, I'm, I'm thinking of using, I'm not quite sure what all the holes are for. I haven't talked to anybody about it, but my, my only good guess would be that there's probably, they designed it or the retail may come with some kind of bracket that you would mount your power supply to. And um, because as it sits, there's really nowhere to mount the power supply. I don't just, you know, drop in, just put a couple screws, nothing like that. So <coughs> I need to figure that out. And I also need to figure out this back hole area here where I'm going to actually be putting my monitor stand. Um, I'm ditching the bottom of my XF, XFX stand and I'm going to be mounting all the monitors on a pole that's going to come straight off the back. So uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be up flush or if it's going to be out a little bit. I got to figure out how I'm going to attach it to here because however I attach it, most likely it's gonna be the same way for my customer, uh, for Phil's desk. So I need to figure that out. And um, I was talking with my buddy Dwight earlier about cabling. So for my mouse, my keyboard, my headset, anything that's USB is gonna be a, a chore to get. I don't want the cables to run across the front of the desk. I want the cables to go to the back so I need to figure out how and where I'm going to actually extend that. Sorry, I'm moving the, the mic cable here. So I need to figure out how I'm gonna extend that if I'm gonna use like a USB extension to, cause I don't think my mouse cable is gonna be long enough to run from, let's say my mouse is here, all the way across and through that hole in the corner. Or if I'm gonna put another hole maybe here on the back and then it'd have to still plug in. So I was thinking about maybe drilling a hole back here somewhere to run the USBs directly through and then be able to plug in there. So that's still something kind of kicking around. So, uh, you know, once I figure it out, then we'll get to that part, I guess. Um, also, um, so this isn't like your standard PC where I could just pick it up and, uh, you know, move it around and drain it or fill it. So i um, trying to figure out a fill and drain system for this setup. So most likely the fill port will be somewhere here, closest to the reservoir, because I think both the reservoirs will be up here. Uh, the drain system, I might have two different drains. One for the two, if I put two 480s in the back, I'll have one drain for both those 480s, because um, that'll be a low point. And then I'll have another one below the reservoirs to be able to drain them both out, maybe with to separate them off with ball valves or something. Um, but I'm trying to keep it, trying to keep it simple, but at the same time being able to main, maintenance it on the fly without having to tear everything apart, you know, or breaking apart pieces or pulling the glass off too far. Because if you put a fill port like right in this area, in the back chamber area, here I could take the glass, slide it forward just enough to get to the fill port, pop the cap, fill it, and then slide my glass back. So. That's what I'm shooting for, but you know how that goes. Sometimes things, you may plan them out and they just don't work out. Um, so let's go ahead and move over to the legs. I'll, we'll talk a little bit about the legs. So uh, now I have the legs here. Um, I went ahead and I already tore apart one of the legs. Um, this is the top, the bottom. This is actually your front section here. Um, for this section, there's a piece that goes on to it like so. 
that caps it off. It's kind of a trim piece. Um, I guess I could pull it out of there so you can see it. I didn't unbox these or unwrap these because there's really no point. But um, So that'll cover up this, this exposed area here. It goes like that. It covers the bottom. Um, the way these are joined is two screws, one on each side with a stud in the middle. Um, kind of a, you know, threaded, dual threaded stud. And then they have three down this side, three down that side. And then they have a um, screw or bolt and in, in nut along the bottom and across the top. They're a little hard to get to um, in the center there, but uh, Dwight figured it out, so that was a good thing. So let's talk about these pieces here. So if this setup is similar, because one of the things I'm trying to figure out right now is for my customer is how I'm going to ship his PC, um, his desk to him without having to tear it all apart. So if this is a similar setup, the leg setup, um, then I might be okay. Basically just take the legs apart, attach these pieces to the desk, and then on site assemble the legs together. Whereas, because some of these bolts might be underneath the motherboard tray or whatever, so I should be okay. Um, but if it's not, then it'll make it a little different. And then uh, what, I, what I also wanted to mention is, so these are the skids that, uh, that the, the chassis sits on. Um, what I'm probably gonna do is put like a, a four inch piece of wood on the bottom. Um, I'll trim it up, make it look nice, you know, maybe paint it black or whatever I'm gonna do. And the reason I wanna do that is because the chair I'll be using is my same everyday beater chair that I have out here in the garage. So um, being that that's the chair I'm gonna use, it has one of those, it's one of those oddball chairs. You know, some chairs they raise up to about, you know, that high or whatever, but drop really low. Well, if uh, Dwight can pan over here. So this is all the way down right now. And that's all the way up. So the reason I like this, uh, this chair is it is a little different. And my current gaming setup, as you can see over there, is very high. So this chair actually goes up to just the right height because I built that bench around my chairs. Um, so I want to be able to roll underneath my desk uh, without my legs hitting, you know. So right now I, I've already tested this. I put this up on the legs and, and I can roll under it, but you know, it gets to the point if I try to get comfortable, my legs are hitting the bottom of the desk. So um, I want to go a little bit higher. And I think it'll add a little bit of stability because of the fact that my garage kind of has a downward slope. So I got to try to level it off. Um, so yeah, one will have like probably eighth inch of sheeting on extra on the bottom of it on top of that. All right, so one other thing that I wanted to talk about was the side piece. This is a dress up piece that goes on the side of the, uh, the legs here. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is actually most likely put piece of acrylic that's exactly the same size and back like that acrylic so it blows through the cutout it lights that up it'll light up the cutout and I'll get the nice glow effect around the trim um, because there's there's no set depth here I could put a freaking four inch piece of acrylic behind it if I wanted to you know um, if I have that big of a standoff so what I'll probably do is get some kind of um, long standoff to go here and then um, then mount the acrylic and this piece to it and another cool feature obviously they thought about cabling for pretty much everything so you can i can run a power wire through this hole at the top and run it out here to, to power my lights or whatever um, i may put some shelves in also on the uh, in the in, you know underneath the chassis or the desk or whatever i want to say these look like these little notches here look like those wall hangers don't they dwight because, I mean, look, this one lines up with that one, so on and so forth. This doesn't line up with anything, but, and yeah, and they're up and down. So I want to say you're able to put shelves, because I noticed Peter, one of the desks, um, has a shelf underneath it, but this is the non-retail, so I didn't get no shelves. What the heck, man? All right, so that about wraps it up. I just kind of wanted to do an intro into the, uh, my new build. This is my new personal build, and uh, I wanted to go over what's going on, give you a little bit of video footage of the what the desk looks like now. Um, we'll get into the hardware later, but for the most part, it's pretty much all the same hardware from my, 
the personal build I just finished that I have, it's still pen over there, Dwight. Still sitting over there, by the way. So uh, I'm not even using it. Um, and uh, the only difference really is that I will be changing video cards from that one to this one. But anyways, uh, I wanted to say a big thank you to the Red Harbinger team for sending me their prototype um, so I get a chance to work with this desk and uh, do some awesome build in it. So once again, thank you for watching my video. Until next time.